everybody gets a spot. We all see it. Great, we're good, we're good. Great, we're going to stand up maybe? Okay. Okay. Can we go down the line, starting with you and here, just tell us your name and where you are joining us from? Hi, I'm Megan. I'm from Raleigh. Woo! I'm Jerry. I'm from Roseboro. I'm Kathy. I'm from Roseboro. What's up? <laughs> I'm Cheyenne. I'm from New York, but I just moved to Fayetteville. Hello, my name is Shanika Gooden, and I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia, but I'm here in Fayetteville with you all from Harlem. Hey guys, my name is Matthew Mucha. I'm originally born in New Jersey, but now I live in New York, and I love being there. My name is Tisha May, and I'm from Fayetteville. My name is Gerard. I'm from Hi, my name is Elise Mata. I'm from Fayetteville, Atlanta. I'm Bill Saunders. I'm from Southern Pact. I'm Randy Payne. I'm originally from Raleigh, uh, but I live in New York now. My name is Gerard M. Williams, and I am from Raleigh, North Carolina. Woo! My name is Ricardo Morgan, and I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Yeah. My name is Amber French, and I live in Charlotte. Great. Thank you all so much. Wow, there's a lot of you here. Uh, I love that. I love that. Any questions that you have for our cast? And yes, right there. Yes, say it out loud. How well, long have y'all been practicing? <laughs> First preview on the 9th, and here we are. Yeah. But we basically had to learn to show the lead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Broadway 
has taken it from big shows of 60, 70 people down to shows of 15, 20, and everybody has to be a triple threat. I am very grateful that I am old enough now to have missed that. But the young folks that are out here have to do all three things at the same time, and it's insane. Go ahead, Flood. Hey. Go ahead, Flood. Yes. Um, hi, good job. I'm the theater teacher. What's the right school? performed in the Wizard of Oz. I had some tech crew members in here. I had people that done help with set design. And then I have some of my regular students who have not gotten an opportunity to actually perform yet. They just did minor things in the classroom. And some of them, they think that they just come in class and just jump on stage. What kind of advice do you have for my kiddos? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, just speaking to like a, a high school level, my two high school teachers were huge in kind of pushing me in, so I think absorbing knowledge of your teachers and people that have done this before and just soaking it in. Our interns that are running backstage are doing their steaming costumes, they're putting our mics on, they're laying out, they're doing a thousand things at once so that they can absorb it all so that one day if they decide, hey, I really like this one avenue, they have a mindset of it. But I mean, I mean I've only been doing this, I mean, I've been doing this like 10 years and I just think absorb everything like a sponge. You never know when you're gonna need something that you Remember from six years ago, it just pops up. And I want to add to that, remembering that theater is a collaborative art form. So that means collaborating with your director, choreographer, lighting designer, sound designer, everyone. We all have one goal when we're trying to put on the show, that's to put on the best show that we have. So it doesn't matter if you're an actor and you're like, oh, I'm the even star. That somehow this really is. There are some people like that who can get to that level. Once you get to the level, do, do you. But wherever you go, theater is a collaborative art form. You don't have to work with it. Yeah, yeah, different people. So I guess we know that's why. And not only just that, like practice honestly makes perfect. It's so cliche, but that is the real deal. Like all the Tony Award winning, Emmy Award winning um, actors, singers, dancers that you look up to, they are going to their voice lessons. They are still taking acting class. They're, that's why acting coaches exist and they make a lot of money because they are on the TV and film sets with these Oscar winning, you know, uh, stars, and they are helping them prepare for each and every single role that they do. So it's not about just getting up there and being like, oh, I have it. The thing is, if you have the natural intuition to do it, and you feel it in your spirit that you have it, imagine when somebody can get in there and fine tune those natural instincts that you have. You'll be that much better. You know what I mean? You never want to feel like, I've already arrived. You should constantly and constantly and constantly be feeling like, okay, I can be better. Even down to us just doing this performance today. Like, we've already had a week of performances, but we're, I, I mean, me personally, I'm still like, okay, and then tonight I gotta do better, and then the next day, I'm gonna do even better. You know, it, it's just that it's never ending, because also the industry is very, um, the industry continuously gets better. So you also have to evolve and grow with the industry. So you, you will always be practicing. Please don't just get on stage and think that you can do it. And just to add to uh, <laughs> that's theater as well, there's many, many opportunities in theater. It's just, there's also stage, but we also have some incredible seamstress back here. I mean, like the cast members are sitting here sewing buttons and hemming, things like that. So like there's lights, there's sound. I mean, it, it, it really does take a whole entire village just to put these smiles on your face and these tears in your eyes. Um, really, but I commend everybody who has like many, many traits just within this type of arts and entertainment industry. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So definitely listen to what your teacher says, number one, <laughs> always. <laughs> your teacher has your back. And anybody that is here to help you in this industry from like A to C, to grow into that sweet flower, whatever it is, pay attention to every little detail as well because you just never know. You might have to do your own makeup. You may have to sew a button back on. You just never know. So thank y'all for coming as well. <laughs> uh, Matt. Matthew mentioned that that they're interns backstage. So just for you high school students, we do have a really great internship program. It's year long and it is for high school students and they are students that are back here on crew for all of the shows. Get out of here! Yeah. Are there any that say hi real quick? Yeah, sure. Give a quick little wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some more. I see out here there's 30 
30 backstage. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. You got you. Go ahead. Do you have any advice on like future actors or actors who like have a stage character and say something goes out of whack? something gets skipped, you know how to jump to the next thing because you already know what the next thing is. So always be thinking ahead while you're on stage as well. And um, even as Elise was saying, stay in character. Um, I don't speak in the entire first act until the end. And even off stage, my first time, I'm not talking. I'm not talking to any of the cast members at all. I'm staying that character on and off stage the entire time. But he knows all the songs and the dance people. <laughs> 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 oh, and also, Things do happen on stage because every now and then something does go wrong. Just taking that deep breath, like instead of breaking, taking one deep breath in. Yes, like, that is his real voice. Yes, I, I just want to say before we go on to the next question, that really goes off of what um, your teacher was saying. Yeah, you can just go off and jump on stage and and expect it to be done. There's an incredible amount of focus that needs to happen. These guys know what they're doing, they know what everybody else is doing, so that if something does go wrong, they can all work together to keep the show moving forward. Make sense? Yeah? Next. Um, I wanna know who the beautiful stage of... There we go. Yeah, there's a set designer that came and designed the set and then we have some lovely gentlemen that are back there somewhere that helped build and paint it all. How long did it take? That's a very good question. <laughs> they, started, they started designing and building over a month before we came here to start rehearsals. Uh, but the, the day that we the day we got here, they were taking down the other show. Because there was another show on stage with I don't know, 150 chairs on stage. Yeah. The last show was all set up on stage. Table. Nobody sat here. So it, it, the design takes is a little bit far in advance, and the building happens, but it comes up pretty quick in, in the space itself. Right here. Yes. What is it about what y'all do that stirs your soul? Don't ask a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things about working in the theater is collaboration and community. Um, I'm a huge people person, and so just to get the chance to meet uh, so many beautiful souls uh, on this journey. I would say collaboration with the community is, is a big one for me. I would say the spiritual connection. Like, uh, I am a, a big spiritual person, and I feel like sometimes the the biggest time that I feel God and I can sense Him is when I'm on stage. Like, I, I, and I can't. That, that, that just drives me because it makes me feel like I'm doing exactly what his will is for me, exactly what he want, what I, was, what I was destined here to do. And it happens every single time, like from my toes all the way up to the top of my head, I just I just feel it, you know? You know how people say sometimes like you black out and you're like, I don't even remember being on stage. That happens to me, like seriously, it happens where I'm like, 
oh my God, did I really just do like a two and a half hour show? Did that note really just come out, you know? But um, that for me is what drives me, is just that spiritual connection and feeling like it was meant to be. Amen. <laughs> um, for me, I love making people laugh. I love entertaining. I love bringing... Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm a mess. I love bringing smiles to the people. It, it, it just, you feel like this energy inside your chest. It's like, ooh, when people are smiling and they're happy, and I'm like, oh, I did that, I did that. Even when making them cry, just feeling emotions and those feelings, that's what I love bringing to the people. So. <laughs> All right, one more question. Yes. So, like, during the show, like, some of us had, like, some oohs and ahs and stuff like that. How did y'all, like, go, like, with it? Like, did y'all break, like, pause and then continue or what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the first time it happens ever, you're you're shocked at what is happening. But if you practice and you know where you're supposed to be and you have honed the skills to just keep going, right? But I will say it's also... It's a skill in itself, learning how to hold for laughter, how to, because every audience is different. We'll have an audience that is loud, calling back to the stage, et cetera, and the next night silent. They still love it, and they're just different. But it is a skill. So the more you practice and get on stage, the more you can learn about human life. It is nice to hear stuff like, I, I personally like hearing audience responses because it's like, you rehearse with each other, so <laughs> I guess, you know, sometimes it's really nice. No, it's really it's really nice to hear the responses because you get so used to just rehearsing with each other that we kind of become, you know, so used to the joke that we don't even laugh anymore or a sentimental moment. We don't even do that anymore. Or we may say something like I know the first audience we had, I said something and I was shocked that it was funny. I was like, oh I guess that is funny. Yeah. Well let me dig into that. You know what I mean? But it's I like audience. Responses. I hate when the audience is all like quiet and uptight, you know? You're here with us and it's such an intimate house. You guys are so close that if you didn't have any kind of response, I think that would really throw us off even more than if you did it. Also for me, going back to our first speaking night, um, the hardest time in the show to stay focused is when Gator finally speaks and he says stop. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And there's always someone in the house that has a very audible reaction. <laughs> and for me, what helps me is eye contact with my fellow actors to know that we're still here in the scene. Mm -hmm. I did not hear that. What was that? I did not know. <laughs> um, just to stay in that moment because that moment is so special and that moment is so real. You know, and loving your reactions, David would start cackling along with you. But Bobby is seeing his dear friend Felicia hurt. So just staying on the fellow actors eye contact is most important for me in those moments. After three weeks of rehearsal, we forget that it's funny. We forget that it's emotional. The first, our first preview, we had what, 100 high school kids in the front section here who were with us every step of the way. And all of a sudden, when, um, when Gator speaks at the end of the act, those of us that are singing the prayer off stage are looking at each other. And literally, I turned around and Two of us were crying because we had forgotten how meaningful that song is. We were so busy learning the song, learning the notes, learning the harmonies that we forgot what the heck's going on in the scene. Because we we're off stage in the corner watching the video monitor to see Sarah, who's on the TV right there. You can see her waving at us. And she's amazing, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Well, my friends, that is all the time we have. I would like to.